Welcome to Football Friday Night here at Eastridge. Chuck Scoville, Larry Cecil, and Dr. Don Bevins on the camera as we're ready to kick this one off between Shelby Valley and Eastridge. And uh, Larry, kind of an interesting game tonight. I think the, the field conditions may slow Shelby Valley down a little bit. It's kind of muddy and wet out there. They come in three and one and Eastridge one and three. And before we can talk about it, they've got that ball kicked off. It comes to Eastridge, number 81. Uh, gets out there to about the 34-yard line. Corey Mullins on the return. Now we can talk about the game. What do you think about this one? Well, it's, it's a big district game for both teams, that's for sure. East Ridge is 0-2 uh, in the district, so, you know, they're looking for that first district win, and Shelby Valley got their district uh, campaign started off last week with a win with uh, Pike Central, so it's a big uh, game for both teams, and the field condition's a little bit wet, but I think both teams will be able to... Uh, yep, got a <laughs> jump there. Uh, look like Shelby Valley across the neutral zone. We'll see on the call. Look like they're a little anxious there to get this one started. Yeah, I know uh, as we were coming in, Don said hello to one of the assistant coaches and he was all excited, says uh, we're hoping for our fourth win tonight. So I guess they're they're pumped up to play. Yes, they, they could go four and one with a win here tonight and two and oh in the district. That's most important. Yeah, really helped their playoff hopes a lot. Straight up the middle they go and a pickup of about three, maybe four yards on the carry. Number 22, I think, on the carry, Brad Branham. He's a 5'7", 205-pound junior. The only common opponent these two teams have uh, played, uh, Larry mentioned uh, Pike Central losing a, a close one to Shelby Valley, or Pike Central, yeah, lost a close one to Shelby Valley, and they beat Eastridge in a close game. That time, number 15 looked like Tommy Bingham straight up the middle, close to the first down marker. First down for Eastridge. Well, a good start for the Warriors. They got that five yards on the penalty, so they had a... Yeah, they kind of had a short field to go mm -hmm. on that first first down, uh, but you know, that uh, kind of get that first one out of the way and under your belt, and it kind of loosens the kids up and, and, and makes them ready to play. And we've got another man coming into the neutral zone right in the middle of the line there. I think it was number 74. Number 74 looks like uh, Tyler Cable. 5'10", 260-pound senior who anchors the middle of that defensive line. That's 10 yards that Shelby Valley has given East Ridge here on the first drive. Kind of a wing formation with double wide outs. Got a man in motion, goes to Ratliff on the snap. Ratliff finds a hole and finds some running room. Gets down inside the 40 yard line to the 39 of Shelby Valley at another East Ridge first down. It just uh, snapped straight back to him in the shotgun uh, formation and uh, he just went up the middle and split a tack it, uh, tackle there in the line and uh, broke it f uh, loose for about 15 yard gain. Got to see East Ridge a couple of weeks ago in an impressive win over South Floyd and you never know who they're gonna snap the ball to. It may be the quarterback, maybe Ratliff, maybe the running back. Uh, kind of an interesting offense, but so far they've done pretty well. Now we've got some jumping on both sides of the ball. Who moved first? And I think it's going on Eastridge this time. It is. One of the linemen was set and then raised his head and Shelby Valley jumped across, but they were pointing at him and the referee agreed. Well, they was pointing at him the, the previous uh, penalty, so uh, maybe they was watching a little closer and, and picked it up that time. So the five yards that uh, Shelby Valley gave it to him, they gave it back. First and 15 now for Eastridge. The ball snapped to Green, the quarterback. He's got it on the keeper. Gets inside the 35 to the 33. So, so far, Eastridge able to move the ball early on the ground, and that's going to bode well for them. They want to try to control the football and the clock. I know Shelby Valley likes to... They're doing a lot more passing this year, aren't they, Larry? Uh, yeah, they've uh, kind of mixing it up a lot this year and, and kind of going to uh, the short passing game, using it for a running game. Uh, East Ridge has run four plays, and these four different guys carried the ball. So variety on the offense. That time, Ratliff with the snap gives off to number 12, Caleb Epling. And Epling picks up a couple of yards down near the 31. Look like it's going to bring up a third and one, and that's uh, the fifth play that uh, East Ridge has ran, and that makes five different guys that's touched the ball. 
Third down and one and a big play for Eastridge. They're in Shelby Valley territory and they'd love to get on the scoreboard first. Big third down play. Man in motion is Epling. Ratliff fakes like he's got the snap. It comes to the up man. Green, I think, has it, the quarterback, and he has the first down. Number 22, Brad. Yeah, he, he lined you know, Brad up. Brad Branham got the snap instead of the quarterback. Yes, yeah, number 22, he lined up uh, in, in like the wishbone, and uh, they just snapped a direct snap back to him, and, and he took it up the middle. They just liked the yard. He picked up three, so it moved the chains, gives him a first down at the Shelby Valley 28-yard line. You'll have Ratliff and Green and Branham all back there in the backfield, and the ball could come to any one of them at any time on the snap. This time Ratliff with it. He goes straight up and not much running room there. A hard yard, maybe two. We're going to give him a gain to look like two. Be second and eight. Yeah, you have to kindly watch close when that ball snapped because you can't tell who's going to get it. This is the first time I've seen East Ridge. It's kind of interesting offense they run. Kind of a variation on that. I don't know, what do you call it, a wing tee or something like that, a wing formation anyway. Not well, something you see every day. Right. Ratliff gets the snap this time, but we've got a whistle before the play develops, and we've got a procedure penalty going against the Warriors. Both teams coming out ready to play. They're a little anxious. That, that makes four penalties. They had two each way. Uh, two uh, false starts on East Ridge, two offsides on Shelby Valley. So they'll just have to settle down. And, uh, you know, you have to watch that ball. That's, that's when the ball moves is when you got to, when, when the play begins, it's not when the quarterback uh, makes a hard count or something. So they'll, they'll get uh, settled down here in a minute. Ratliff this time on the short pass has the man open number 80 on the catch and that is Mike Rowe. He gets down to about the 18 yard line. They may mark it all the way down to the 17. Number 80, Michael Rowe. Very close to the first down. Ball spotted on the 18. I believe they've given him the first down. Look like they're moving the stick. So that was a pickup of 13 yards. Ratliff got some pressure on him, but hung in the pocket and threw a little five-yard pass, kind of like a little dump pass to the tight end, and they got the first down out of it. Wide out split both ways. Shelby Valley stacking up in the middle of the line, and they're going to where they're going to run at, and a pickup of a couple there. That's number 22, Branham on the carry on the left side. Picked up, uh, looked like a pickup of three. Valley had five or six defensive players right up there along the line. They were expecting the run, and that's exactly what happened. Well, I think uh, East Ridge uh, threw the one pass, but it's just kind of, uh, they'll probably throw one occasionally, you know, just kind of keep that defense loosened up. But I think primarily all their plays is going to be running plays, looks like. Ratliff breaks a couple of tackles and slips inside the 10 yard line down near the five and it should be enough for a first and goal for Eastridge. Didn't look like there's nothing there for him, Chuck. Uh, he just uh, hit in the middle and kind of stood him up and nobody wrapped him up and he kept fighting and then he squirted through. And, yeah, and, came uh, up out of that pile still on his feet. Yeah, and, and uh, picked up about 13 yards. Big play there gives Eastridge a first and goal with 640 left in this opening quarter. No score here from Eastridge. First and goal from the six. And the Warriors want to take a timeout. So with that timeout, we'll take a break here on Intermountain Sports. Welcome back to live action. 631 left in the first quarter of play. No score here. East Ridge and Shelby Valley, but East Ridge with a first down and goal from the six. Ball snapped to Ratliff. He gives off. It's Epling, I think, number 12 it is, and he's down around the two-yard line. Caleb Epling. Carry by Caleb Epling down to the two-yard line. Just a little pitch out play around the corner, and if he'd uh, got a little bit of a more seal block on that uh, corner, he took that one in, Chuck. I tell you, Eastridge has looked pretty good on offense so far. Um, this team over the last couple of years, uh, they've had bright spots. Seems like a lot of uh, mistakes, penalties, things like that have really hurt them in some of their 
close ball games with teams like uh, Shelby Valley, Pike Central, and, and otherwise, but so far they are executing pretty well. Nothing there, middle of the line. They try to go in, and I think they were stacked up pretty much for no gain there. 22, Branham on the carry. Branham on the carry as they unpile. Yeah, Sheb, or uh, East Ridge has also had uh, uh, some coaching uh, changes, you know, and when, mm -hmm. when you have that coaching change, you know, oh, one coach comes in and kind of gets the program headed in the direction that he wants to take it, and then, uh, you know, they switch coaches, and you have some players to, uh, you know, lead the team, and then you have to build them back up. So, uh, you know, that stability in football is probably more important in any sport than uh, of the three that's uh, in this area. Flag down on the play before the play gets going. Uh, Shelby Valley offside is going to take them half the distance to the goal, put the ball near the one. Yeah, Eastridge started out fairly well for a first-year school with Eric Ratliff at the helm, and uh, then they surprisingly got rid of Eric and brought a coach in from across the state and had some real high hopes for him, but uh, things just kind of fell apart. A lot of the players quit. Uh, the team went in the wrong direction, and then they hired Eric Ratliff back, and now they're heading in the right direction again. Touchdown, Eastridge. That's number four, Ratliff. David Ratliff on the carry from a yard out, and Eastridge draws first blood with 4.52 left in the opening quarter. They're up six to nothing with the extra point coming. Yeah, they, they just took that uh, kickoff and uh, just pretty well just, uh, you know, moved right, right on down the field. They have some penalties moving forward. Uh, Shelby Valley helped them some. Then East Ridge uh, gave it back to them. So basically, uh, the, they just uh, run their offense, and uh, Shelby Valley didn't have an answer for them on this first drive. Ratliff attempting the extra point. It's blocked. Never got up off the ground. And, uh, no good. And the score remains East Ridge 6, Shelby Valley nothing with 4.52 left in the first quarter. We'll be back with the Warrior kickoff after this break on Intermountain Sports. Welcome back here to East Ridge. The Warriors draw. The first score, and they're up 6 to nothing. The kickoff coming from the Warriors. Ratliff on the boot. Comes over here to the sideline. Out of bounds penalty coming, and the ball can either be taken at the 35 or... Do, can they make them re-kick it in high school, or do they just take it at the 35, you, you got three options. You can take a, a re-kick, move it back five yards, re-kick it. You can take it uh, where the ball goes out of bounds, or you, they say 30, uh, at the 35, but actually it's 25 yards from the place the ball's kicked. So, uh, of course, uh, you know, if you kick from the 40, you know, to the 35, that's where you're going to take. So, mostly that's uh, where the teams usually take it. Of course, it looks like they're going to make them re-kick here tonight. Uh, that kick was kind of short, so uh, they figured maybe that if they could re-kick, they could mm -hmm. uh, get a good return on it. We'll see which, uh, if it uh, works out for them. Yeah, it's one of the first times I've seen, at least this year so far, a team made to kick over. Usually it's just automatically taken at the 35. This time, a little squip kick. It bounces around, down around the 32, and Eastridge has got a shot at it, but they missed it. It goes out of bounds, and it'll go to Shelby Valley because no one had control of it on the kick. Yeah, they dodged the bullet. Shelby Valley did there. The ball kindly took a funny hop and bounced over the man's head, and uh, hit, uh, being uh, field conditions where he was, one of their men kindly slid off the ball, and, and uh, he was in open. And East Ridge had, had a shot at it, didn't yes, they? Yes, they did. They had, had a, a man on there, and he, but he couldn't control it and went out of bounds, so due to nobody had possession of it, it would be Shelby Valley's ball where the ball goes out of bounds, and that looks like it's going to be on the 30-yard line. Shelby Valley breathing a sigh of relief on that kick. They could have had it at the 35, and they almost didn't have it at all. Now they'll start at the 30 first time on offense. Yeah, it didn't work out for them the way they was hoping it would work out for them. Got one man split out here to the near side of the field. Quarterback under center. That is number three. Is that Cody Mitchell, I guess, on the carry, the fullback? Yeah, they, they tried to, uh, to run around the end on the short side of the field, so uh, East Ridge just flowed to the ball and used the sideline as the extra defensive man. and. Uh, knocked him out after a gain of look like about six, so it's a pretty good pickup for him. Tyler Johnson at quarterback, Cody Mitchell, Nathan Mullins starting at the running back spot. Now just one back in. Got a man at the wing there is number 10, Dylan Hughes. 
straight up the middle and not much, maybe a yard. Good solid line play that time by the defense. That is Mitchell on the carry. That's Mitchell again, yeah. Looks like he gained one, so it's going to bring up a, a third in about two and a half. Looks like Kobe Newsom and Lucas Simpkins are your wide outs. Uh, one of them just trotted into the field, and uh, that is Simpkins here on the near side. He's just a... Uh, Tough play there, but I think Shelby Valley may have gotten enough with forward progress for the first down. Yeah, where they're marking that, he's going to pick that up. I think that was number 20, uh, Jonah, Jonah Justice. Justice. Pick up a four and a first down. First down, Wildcats. Doug on, I remember when Colby Newsom was just a freshman, and uh, now he's a senior. He's been around a while on this Shelby Valley ball club. Yeah, it seems like it don't take them long to kindly uh, move on through the uh, high school. It's it's a short career for them sometimes. Uh. Tyler Johnson back to pass. Fires one out to the far side of the field. Simpkins, the intended receiver, incomplete. Johnson incomplete. Second down and 10. Yeah, time seems to fly. Everybody keeps getting older, and we just we just stay the same, don't we? Just young as ever, don't we, Dr. Don and Larry? Stay, <laughs> Everybody yeah. else is getting older. Just like, we're, we're just barking time. We're just like wine. <laughs> Get, uh, getting finer uh, with time. It just amazes me sometimes. I, I've been doing this so long. I see kids now that have got their own kids, and their kids are starting to play sports that I covered way back when I first started covering football and basketball in this area. Cody Mitchell gets a couple of yards as he tries to cut it back in the middle. Yeah, I've, uh, uh, where I've been officiating the last uh, 12, 15 years in different sports, I'm uh, officiating games that uh, guys that I went to school with, uh, uh, officiating games that uh, their grandkids are playing in. <laughs> school's out now, the school's coming to pocket. <laughs> Dr. Don says school's out and Alice Cooper's coming to Pike. Well, that's absolutely right, Don. He is. He's still hanging in there. He's not getting any older, is he? Uh, Don won't never get old. Swing pass out to Brock Kenny, and he is belted down for a loss by uh, the Eastridge defense, David Ratliff, on the tackle. So Ratliff scored a touchdown and made a big defensive play. It's going to be fourth. Yeah, fourth down for Shelby Valley and Long, so they're probably going to have to boot it away. Yeah, that, that was a uh, backward pass, you know, a lateral, so I don't know if he was setting up maybe that he's supposed to throw that downfield or not, but that defender was on him so fast he didn't get to have a chance to. No. Eastridge so far looking good on defense. Low kick, but it's fielded there by Epling. He comes up the field, and he is taken down about the 46-yard line, and Eastridge will have good field position once again. Yeah, they're going to have excellent field position. Shelby Valley uh, couldn't uh, picked up the one first down and uh, moved the ball up a little bit, and then that uh, throwed for a loss on that last play, and there's a short punt and uh, a little good return. So they're, they're going to be in excellent field position starting out on their own 46, and Shelby Valley didn't have no answer for them this first drive, so we'll see if they've made some adjustments on the defensive side of the ball. This time they've got a wing man and uh, two wide outs. Got a flanker back out there on the far side of the field. And a little bit of a delay, I guess the referee trying to get the sideline cleared over there, get the chains all straightened out before they start. Yeah, I think the players was kind of in, maybe the coaching staff out and they uh, couldn't get the chain set where they needed them, so. Now back to live action. Ball snapped back to number 15, I think. I was going to say Keith Green, but I think Tommy Bingham's the one that got that's, it. That's Cody Varney. He's a 5'10", uh, 155-pound uh, pound freshman. Second and one, Warrior. Second and one for Eastridge, so a nice little game there. And he trots off the field and gets congratulated by his teammates. That's uh, Chuck at six different ball carriers that has carried the ball for East Ridge so far. 
And this time it's going to be Brad Branham, and he gets more than enough for the first down. Everybody knew he was going to go straight up the middle. Shelby Valley had that line pretty well stacked up, and somehow they still found a hole, Larry. Well, it looked like the center and one of the guards got off the ball real good, and he just got behind them, kindly pushed them, and uh, they got a six-yard gain out of it. And again, you know, there hits three and four or five yards a pop right now for uh, East Ridge, so Shelby Valley's going to have to shore up that defense, or it could be a long night for them. Yeah, East Ridge wasn't running this well against South Floyd who they blanked I think 40 to nothing a couple of weeks ago uh, so Shelby Valley needs to come up with an answer to stop the run right now this time what Ratliff on the keeper he goes around the right side got some running room beats the first defender and is finally drug out of bounds but not until he gets inside the 20 to around the 16 yard line in there on the stop was number three uh, Cody Mitchell but a big gain by David Ratliff who's had a whale of a ball game so far uh, yeah, they snapped it back to him, and uh, his lead blocker was number 16, Green, and he sealed that outside uh, defensive end. I've got an excellent block on him, and he just went around his uh, uh, off his hip and uh, turned it upfield, and they had to run him down from behind. Uh, a gain of uh, 23 yards to be uh, first and 10 from the 17-yard line. Epling and Bingham come in as Miller goes out for East Ridge and got more jumping on the line. Let's see, we got another flag. A lot of movement on the, the lines tonight. They're really ready to go at each other, aren't they? Valley gets called once again. I, I think that East Ridge has kind of got uh, Shelby Valley confused a little bit on defense. They they're not really know who, who they're hiking the ball to, so I don't know if they're going with a hard count. Uh, if it is, guy's doing an excellent count because he's not bobbing his head or anything, but for some reason they keep jumping off bound, uh, off sides. Six to nothing, 57 seconds left in the first quarter, and Eastridge threatening once again. They're in the red zone of Shelby Valley with the ball on about the 12-yard uh, line. Pass into the end zone. It is tipped, but it caught. Great. Looked game. like somebody got a hand on it, but it still came down into the hands of Corey Mullins, number 81 in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. That was just a great catch for that kid. Uh, they led him a little too much, and mm -hmm. uh, he kind of had to turn to the wrong shoulder, and he just laid out and pulled that ball in. The official was there, had a good look at it, saying that he uh, had possession of It's going to be pass interference there. Good call as yep. number number 20 for Prestonsburg. I think that's uh, Clark, isn't it? Taylor, Ta Taylor yeah, Clark. Taylor Clark. Yep. Pass was intended for uh, Lucas Simpkins down that sideline, and he just, uh, the defender just, just bumped him, didn't let him run his route, and he was well past the line of scrimmage. Well, and also the ball was in the air, so, you know, you can't, uh, once that uh, quarterback releases that ball, that's going to be uh, number one seed going into the playoffs. Here's the pitch back, sweep to the left, and nothing there. Good job by the Black Cats up front. That was trying to see that was number 52 Matt Blevins that uh, he, he didn't make the play as far as the tackle but he turned up the, the uh, ball carrier back into the middle to his linebackers he done his job and uh, they was able to stop him for no gain. That was uh, Nathan Mullins on the run there for Shelby Valley. He's a wide receiver ran the end around there took the pitch. And Johnson under center. Got Adkins put out wide to the right, Chris Adkins. And here's a handoff to Brock Kenny. Nowhere to go over that right side. In fact, he lost a yard back to the 26. It's going to bring up fourth and 11 now for Shelby Valley. That's number uh, 28, uh, Clay Jamerson, and number five, uh, Seth Setzer in on that tackle. And Prestonsburg uh, defensive uh, front uh, three is uh, starting to come and take control of that uh, line of scrimmage in this drive, Ken. Wildcats going for it, fourth and 11. Kenny goes in motion. Johnson firing it deep down the right side and off the hands of Anthony Dameron, or Chris Adkins, excuse me, intended, the intended receiver. Prestonsburg defense held, so they'll be taking over first and 10 from their own 26-yard line. 6.24 to go in the second.
quarter. Prestonsburg up seven to nothing. So, Black Cats ready to go here. Birchie to under center. And hand off to the last man through. That's Cranin and nothing there. No gain on the play. Shelby Valley's front four just shut that one down. Everybody just uh, caved that play in the middle and uh, gonna give him maybe a half a yard on it. So it's gonna bring up fourth and one. And they're gonna measure, but uh, doesn't doesn't look like it's even close from here. Yeah, he's uh, he's gonna be probably uh, the length of the football or or uh, more. I think Coach John. Maybe was wanting uh, call for that measurement, really decide, uh, give him a give little more time, time to decide what he's going to do. to do here. Right. Be, uh, be a little risky going forward here. Yeah, it's fourth and about a yard. Yeah. But, uh, and the quarterback comes back on the field, so I think Prestonsburg's going to, might try the old uh, no play, you know, and try to get Shelby Throw Valley to jump off, off sides, but. Uh, If they do decide to uh, run, it's going to be a big play for both teams here, especially Shelby Valley will be able to stop them down in deep in their own end of the field. And now whistle blows. I don't think the ball had been blown, been uh, blown ready right. to play. Yeah. Right. Now we're ready to go. Fourth and one. Merchant, long count. Yep, timeout. You think you're right there. They were just trying to draw Chevy Valley off sides. Right. Wildcats didn't move. So we've got a timeout with 4.43 to play in the first half. It's Prestonsburg 7, Chevy Valley nothing on the Intermountain Sports Network. Pikeville Medical Center makes a monumental leap in healthcare for Eastern Kentucky. We are proud to announce the addition of our newest neurosurgeon, Dr. Dwayne Detzler. These are first class facilities here. And I felt this is a place for me to be in order to help forward the neurosurgical program here at Pikeville Medical Center. Dr. Densler brings us brain surgeries that have never before been offered in Eastern Kentucky. Pikeville Medical Center, raising the bar for health care. What are people saying about Pikeville College? Pikeville College is about the students. We have a small lab setting, so you really get to know the students and interact very well with the students. I know every student's name. When a student asks me for help, I know who they are. And the professors want you to succeed. Anytime you need help, all you have to do is stop by their office. Uh, the professors... Looks like he's got it, Larry. Looks like they're going to spot it at about the 47. Yeah, that's a gutsy play with Coach John. Well, that he, uh, is. He called for the measurement to give him a little time and went out and, and uh, went no play to try to draw Shelby Valley off and then called a timeout and uh, maybe food Shelby Valley a little bit. They thought he was going to punt and he come out and went for it and picked and it up. Picked so. it up, gave it to Setzer and picked up two yards. So We'll write that play. down, 4 428 to go in the second quarter and uh, we'll see how that plays out the rest of this ball game. Here's Craner trying to get to the outside and Logan Bryant wraps him up there. Nice job over there by Bryant defensively, but we've had a flag down and in that area again, Larry, where it could be holding. Yeah, holding, or you could have a, every now and then you see a block below the waist in that area where the back comes out of the backfield. We will find out here just in a moment. Referee Brian Rattlefield tells what it's, it's going to be a hold against Prestonsburg. So. Best that's penalty. Back him up 10 yards, and uh, that's from the spot of the foul, too, isn't it? He was spot of the foul. That's well right. behind the line of scrimmage on that, that play. That holding call has been Preston's burden nemesis so far this first half. Sure has. Backs him up to the 22 yard line. So we're really about, uh, let's see. Got to get to the 48. It's first and 26. Here's a handoff up the middle, and another flag another down. Flag. And boy, is that is that Setzer or Crane? They just would not go down. Setzer. Setzer. He was hit numerous times and just kept driving. Got all the way out to the 31, but this this could be coming back. This could be a face mask. No, it's, it's another, another hole. Another hole. Against Prestonsburg. And that's really going to back him up. 
That's going to be, uh, well, let's see, that's going to be on the 22, so it won't be half the distance. They'll be taking them back 10, 10, 10 yards. 10, 4 yards. Yeah. So it'll be first down and from here to Harold. Yeah. First, first <laughs> down and banner. And banner. There you go. <laughs> it's first down and banner, Shane. <laughs> It is first down and uh, 36. And here's a sweep by Cranin to the right. Ordinarily, that's a really nice gain. He gets about 11 yards out to the 23, but that's still going to leave him 26 yards, 25 yards short. But it's still two downs to go here. So he's replayed first down twice there after the penalty. There's one thing about it. It's uh, eating a lot of time off of that clock, uh, but Preston's better doing this. So if Shelby Valley does hold them, there's not going to be much time left. Uh, 3.33 to go. And here's Cranin going to the left side this time. And he gets up near the 30. Jonah Justice, one of the men on the tackle. Stays inbound, keeps that clock a running. Ball spotted at the 29, actually. So it's going to be third and 19. It's not too often, Ken. You see a uh, 17 yard gain on two plays, and you still got third and 18. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's, that's very unusual. <laughs> and here's the handoff. To Setzer around the right side, and he's going nowhere. B.J. Roberts, and who was that at the bottom of that pile? Well, I tell you, this Chevy Dylan, Valley defense got good speed on the outside. Dylan Brock Kenny. Yeah, was it Kenny? Brock Kenny, number 11, and B.J. Roberts all over that play. Yeah. Clock running, 2.29 to play in the half. And Prestonsburg will be forced to punt on this fourth down. I don't think they're going to go for it by 14, 13 or 14. Is that Burchett punting it? I know Bobby Hughes was their punter. Tyler Johnson under center. Hands it off. That's Jonah Justice around the left side. He gets up to the 40. Tackle there before he got out of bounds, so the clock continues to run. Pick up uh, six yards on the play. It'll be second and four. Clock down to a minute 40 now. To go in the first half, Prestonsburg leading Shelby Valley seven to nothing. As Wildcats break the huddle. Tyler Johnson under center. And here's a handoff again to Jonah Justice. He fights forward, he's close to the first down. I think he's gonna have it. And here, here comes, comes the another late flag in. And that's going to be uh, something said uh, in that pile. Looks like it's going against Shelby Valley, I believe. I think it the is. The Shelby Valley players are seem frustrated. It's a personal foul, so. Well, that's huge. That'll back them up 15 yards, and they probably had the first down there too, Larry. So. Yeah, I, I think they did uh, had the first down, and. Uh, been up close to midfield with a minute 10 to go, and they could have uh, tried something in their passing game, so now they're going to be backed up. and uh, back All the way back to the 29. Right. Where they'll repeat. Uh, looks like they're going to repeat second down. Uh, that actually happened after the play. It looked like they would have measured. Uh, well, he uh, must have been uh, during the play during because the play. he didn't give the dead ball uh, personal foul. He just gave yeah. a personal foul, so. And now we've got an official timeout. I think maybe they're going to uh, talk about that. Yeah, they did change it to third down. So it's third and 16. Okay. Kenny going in motion. Johnson hands it off. And nowhere to go for Nathan Mullins. And Prestonsburg takes a timeout here with 40 seconds to go in the half. They're going to get the ball back here and uh, watch for them maybe to go for the block punt here, Larry. 
Only 40 seconds to go. Well, you're deep in uh, Shelby Valley's end of the field, so if you do uh, rough the uh, punter, it's just going to be a personal foul, uh, automatic first down, 15-yard penalty, so uh, it, that would be a good play to, uh, to try. Good so, time to try. Yeah. Penalties has killed both teams this first, uh, first half, hasn't it? Well, they have. Both of them hurt themselves badly with penalties. Well, Larry, we were able to string together another crew to go to Paintsville tonight. Uh, Charlie Pinson, Danny Van Hoos, and Wayne Fugit down there. I'm telling you. Ashland and Johnson Central play. And uh, going into the season, we thought, boy, that, that'd be a good one there to cover. But Ashland has really struggled this year. And Johnson Central's 7-1 uh, and one on the year. Looking tough. Here's the kick. Got it away. And they did uh, hit the punter, and the uh, flag is down, but... I think that probably is going to be running into the kicker instead of roughing the kicker. He didn't even right. didn't go down. Coach John or uh, Coach uh, is going to have to work on his, with his punter there a little bit on his acting. When you get hit, yeah, you got to go down. You got to <laughs> fall hard. That's it. Twist and turn and right. Holler out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they call it the roughing version. Well, I think they did. So. I believe they did. So it'll yeah. be an automatic first down. Ball out at the 47-yard line, but the Wildcats now with only 30 seconds to go in the half. Big number 70, getting the crowd fired up over here for the Wildcats. Yeah, he's... Uh, Who is that? Let's see if we can get pick his number up here, number seven. Daniel That's Gillespie. Daniel Gillespie. Here's a pass out in the flat to Logan Bryant. Nice and good tackle over there by Prestonburg. Matt Setzer right on top of him. Bryant tried to make a quick cut there, and the Setzer uh, wrapped him up, took him down. Yeah, tried a little uh, flanker screen, and uh, Prestonburg had that one read. we got a timeout now, Shelby Valley, with 12 seconds to go in the half. It's uh, hard to believe, Larry, but only one more week in the regular season of high school football. Next Friday night will be the last night of the regular season, and then uh, we'll start the playoffs two weeks from tonight. Oh, it's uh, flown by, hasn't it? It sure has. Everybody getting geared up for those playoffs. Uh, it's uh, kind of a, a new uh, system on the playoffs this year. The uh, Teams we play in the first two rounds in district. Used to uh, always before you'd go out of district and uh, play, but uh, under the new uh, Tyler Johnson back, he's going to fire it deep down the right sideline for Chris Adkins. And Austin Gearhart went up almost, picked it off. Yeah, un under the new formation of the uh, districts and uh, realignment. Uh, the number one and number four seed, and number two and three seed in each district will play each other, and then the winner of those two games will play against oh, yeah. each other, and then in the third round, you'll travel out of the district. So it's uh, yeah. all, uh, a, a new, uh, new, new system like for us this a, year. I kind of like to call it a new sucky format. I, I don't <laughs> like it. I, <laughs> I mean, don't you, either, you no. see these teams uh, just play, you know, play each other. They did this last year, I think, in district, and. Uh, you see the, some matchups uh, the last week of the season. They come back and play the following week. But here goes Jonah Justice on the run. And he picks up about 10 yards, and he's taken down. And that's it as time runs out in the first half. As your score here at halftime, it's Prestonsburg 7, Shelby Valley nothing. We'll be back shortly with some halftime stats and comments right here on Eastern Kentucky Sports Leader, the Intermountain Sports Network. <laughs> Six twenty-four to go in the second quarter. Prestonsburg up seven to nothing. So Black Cats ready to go here. Birchie under center. And hand off to the last man through. That's Craning and nothing there. No gain on the play. 
Shelby Valley's front four just shut that one down. Everybody just uh, caved that play in the middle and uh, going to give him maybe a half a yard on it. So it's going to bring up fourth and one. Doesn't, doesn't look like it's even close from here. Yeah, he's uh, he's going to be probably the uh, length of the football or, or uh, more. I think Coach John maybe was wanting to uh, call for that measurement, really decide to uh, give him a give little him more time, time to decide what he's going to do. do here. Right. Be, uh, be a little risky going forward here. Yeah, it's fourth and about a yard. Yeah. But, uh, and the quarterback comes back on the field, so I think Prestonsburg's going to might try the old uh, the no play, you know, and try to get Shelby Throw Valley off. to jump off, off sides. But uh, if they do decide to uh, run, it's going to be a big play for both teams here, especially Shelby Valley to be able to stop them down in deep in their own end of the field. And now whistle blows. I don't think the ball had been blown been uh, ready right. to play. Yeah. Right. Now we're ready to go. Fourth and one. Merchant, long count. You think, yep, timeout. You think you're right there. They were just trying to draw Chevy Valley off sides. Right. Wildcats didn't move. So we've got a timeout with 4.43 to play in the first half. It's Prestonsburg 7, Chevy Valley nothing on the Intermountain Sports Network. Pikeville Medical Center makes a monumental leap in healthcare for Eastern Kentucky. We are proud to announce the addition of our newest neurosurgeon, Dr. Dwayne Detzler. These are first class facilities here and I felt this is a place for me to be in order to help forward the neurosurgical program here at Pikeville Medical Center. Dr. Densler brings us brain surgeries that have never before been offered in Eastern Kentucky. Pikeville Medical Center, raising the bar for healthcare. What are people saying about Pikeville College? Pikeville College is about the students. We have a small lab setting, so you really get to know the students and interact very well with the students. I know every student's name. When a student asks me for help, I know who they are. And the <laughs> professors want you to succeed. Anytime you need help, all you have to do is stop by their office. Uh, the professors. Looks like he's got it, Larry. Looks like they're going to spot it at about the 47. Yeah, that's a gutsy play with Coach John. Well, that he, uh, is. He called for the measurement to give him a little time and went out and, and uh, went no play to try to draw Shelby Valley off and then called a timeout and uh, maybe food Shelby Valley a little bit. They thought he was going to punt and he come out and went for it and picked and it up. Picked so. it up, gave it to Setzer and picked up two yards. So We'll write Good that play. down, four, 428 to go in the second quarter and uh, we'll see how that plays out the rest of this ball game. Here's Cranin trying to get to the outside and Logan Bryant wraps him up there. Nice job over there by Bryant defensively, but we've had a flag down and in that area again, Larry, where it could be holding. Yeah, holding, or you could have uh, every now and then you see a block below the waist in that area where the back comes out of the backfield. And we will find out here just in a moment. Referee Brian Rattlefield tells us what it's, it's going to be a hold against Prestonsburg. So. Good that's penalty. Back that. him up 10 yards, and uh, that's from the spot of the foul, too, isn't it? He was spot of the foul. That's well right. behind the line of scrimmage on that, that play. That holding call has been Preston's burden nemesis so far this first half. It sure has. Backs him up to the 22-yard line. So we're really about, uh, let's see. Got to get to the 48. It's first and 26. Here's a handoff up the middle, and another flag another down. Flag. And boy, is that is that Setzer or Crane? And they just would not go down. Setzer. Well, Setzer. He was hit numerous times and just kept driving. Got all the way out to the 31, but this this could be coming back. This could be a face mask. No, it's, it's another, another hole. Another hole. Against Prestonsburg. And that's really going to back him up. That's going to be, uh, well, let's see, that's going to be on the 22, so it won't be half the distance. They'll be taking them back 10, 10, 10 yards. 10, 4 yards. Yeah. So it'll be first down and from here to first. <laughs> first down and banner. 
and banner. There you go. <laughs> it's first down and banner, Shane. <laughs> It is first down and uh, 36. And here's a sweep by Cranin to the right. Ordinarily, that's a really nice gain. He gets about 11 yards out to the 23, but that's still going to leave him 26 yards, 25 yards short. But it's still two downs to go here. So they replayed first down twice there after the pick. It's uh, eating a lot of time off of that clock, uh, but Preston's for doing this. So if Shelby Valley does hold him, there's not going to be much time left. Uh, 3.33 to go. And here's Cranin going to the left side this time. And he gets up near the 30. Jonah Justice, one of the men on the tackle. Stays inbound, keeps that clock running. Ball spotted at the 29, actually. So it's going to be third and 19. It's not too often, Ken. You see a uh, 17 yard gain on two plays, and you still got third and 18. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very unusual. <laughs> and here's the handoff to Setzer around the right side, and he's going nowhere. B.J. Roberts, and who was that at the bottom of that pile? Well, I tell you, this Chevy Dylan. Valley defense got good speed on the That's outside. Dylan Brock Kenny. Kenny. Yeah, was it Kenny? Brock Kenny, number 11, and B.J. Roberts all over that play. Yeah. Clock running, 2.29 to play in the half. And Prestonsburg will be forced to punt on this fourth down. I don't think they're going to go for it by 13 or 14. Is that Burchett punting it? I know Bobby Hughes was their punter. It is Burt. Tyler Johnson under center. Hands it. Snap back to Johnson. Pass over the middle. Tipped and incomplete. So Johnson and Shelby Valley having difficulty uh, connecting in the passing game tonight. They're one for seven for 13 yards. I'm sure that's not what they expected uh, when they come in, you know, because they've been successful this year throwing the ball, uh, especially the short passing game. But don't know if the uh, conditions of the field, the ball may be a little slick causing that or what. They didn't have no pressure on the quarterback this time. Uh, I don't know if you noticed or not, but that offensive line, what they call crab block at uh, that time, Chuck, they just go into the defensive uh, man's knees and just block them all down, and it gives the quarterback a good uh, view to pass, and he, he just didn't hit He can see over the lines a little bit better that way. Yeah. Right, and, and if you're in on that defensive player's uh, ankles and knees, he's not going to be putting no pressure on the quarterback. Yeah, if he's not tripped up, he's still got a leapfrog over you, and it slows him down, so the quarterback's got a little time to throw it. Yeah, that's, uh, this is uh, looks like about third and 22 for uh, Shelby Valley, so they recovered the fumble on the 21-yard line, and uh, in the three plays that they've ran, uh, along with the penalties, uh, they've ended up losing 11 yards. Third and 20 from the 31, 106 left in the half. Big third down play for Valley. Man in motion is Kenny. Back in the shotgun is Johnson. Fires out to Kenny. He's open and gets down to about the 15. Not going to be enough for the first down, but he gets out of bounds and the clock stops with 58 seconds left and about a fourth down. 
See where they spot the ball. Fourth down about five, maybe four. Let's see if it's going to be inside or outside the 15. They're going to put it right on the 15. It'll be fourth and five, which that's, uh, you know, that's a makeable day on that. So that, uh, they was probably just uh, trying to call a play to, to pick up maybe half uh, one play and half the other and they end up getting 15, so it was a good uh, positive yardage play for them. Valley took a time out to talk things over, but I think Eastridge was every bit as happy with that time out as Valley was. They want to talk about the defense here. And, See if they can come up with a big stop, because the, the first quarter it was all Eastridge, and the second quarter Eastridge has moved the ball, but started to make some mistakes, like we mentioned, uh, that have been a big bugaboo up there as the last couple of seasons, and let Shelby Valley get right back into it. Shelby Valley marched all the way down the field, and then they got the two-point conversion, which made it a uh, four-point ball game, and Eastridge trying to keep them out of the end zone so they can go into the locker room with the lead at halftime. Yeah, Eastridge, uh, Shelby Valley's not really stopped him tonight. Uh, the drives that they've mm -hmm. been stopped on, they've stopped for sale. Johnson up under center. Give off to Kenny. He goes to the outside. Missed tackle there. And, and uh, that may have cost him the first down. He had him back there at the line of scrimmage, but he slipped through, and I think he got enough. Yeah, the, uh, he made a good little move on the uh, defender, uh, had him, uh, had a beat on him, and uh, he just kind of slipped to the side and dived forward, stretched that ball out, and uh, picked up a big first down for Chevy Valley. They're uh, first and goal now on the nine and a half with on the run and clock, 50 seconds to go in first or second quarter. Cox, the linebacker, had him at the ankles and he broke through that tackle. This time it is Mitchell. The fullback taking it to the right hand side and he doesn't get much. No gain on the play and that's the last time out Shelby Valley's got. That's their third time out. 35 seconds left. They had to call that one because the clock would have kept right on running. Yeah, with 35 seconds to go, you could probably call another uh, run and play and uh, hurry and maybe we'll call two plays in the huddle. One of them could be a run and hurry and get back to the line of scrimmage, spike the ball and have time for one more play, play a pass play or something. Right, or, or they could uh, go, uh, you know, to a sideline pass, you know, maybe uh, catch the ball and step out of bounds. And uh, with, with it being second down, uh, you know, if you run a run play and then you uh, that, that, uh, we'll put you at uh, third down, and then you spike that ball, you know, you take a down away from you, you know, usually yeah. they try to spike the ball when it's a first down situation, mm -hmm. and uh, does it put you in that deep a hole, you know, as far as your downs? Well, they could bring us out of retirement, and one of us could try a long field goal before half. Well, if they brought us out of <laughs> I'll hold for you. How about that? <laughs> well, I, don't, I, don't, I think we'd probably better try an end zone pass. Okay. <laughs> 
set in motion is Kenny. He gets the football, tries that right side, and this time they read the play and they did stop it. He didn't break through and uh, he stacked up about a yard into the... No game. Well, they're going to say no game. Yeah, they're, uh, they must have called two plays or they tried that run and play. It's not working. This most likely is going to be a pass where they uh, spike. Look like they're going to spike the ball. So it gives them 13 seconds and one more down. Well, I know from the South Floyd game, uh, if Shelby Valley remembers that or saw. Welcome back as we get ready to start the second half of play. 14 to 12. Shelby Valley up by two on Eastridge. That one two point conversion gave them the lead, uh, Larry. Uh, yeah, that's uh, always uh, important to uh, pick those two-point conversions up. Uh, Shelby Valley, uh, well, East Ridge actually dominated the first half. They had uh, two good scoring drives. Shelby Valley had one good scoring drive, and then uh, toward the end of the uh, the uh, second quarter, East Ridge uh, gave the uh, ball up on a fumble at the 20-yard line, and Shelby Valley was uh, able to uh, put it in the end zone before the half. So. Uh, East Ridge kind of shot herself in the foot there uh, in the second quarter. Uh. There's some hole up the middle. They need to tackle that man, and he gets all the way out to the 50 and inside East Ridge territory before the stop. A low ball bounding on the ground, but there was a hole there, and uh, Simpkins able to exploit that and pick up some nice running room. Yeah, it, uh, just straight up the middle uh, on the uh, kickoff, and uh, looks like he brought it back 25 or 30 yards and got him down on the uh, 48 of East Ridge, so Shelby Valley's going to start in excellent position this second half. Tyler Johnson up under center, gives off to Kenny on that misdirection play to the right side, picks up about three, maybe four to the 45. We'll give him three, second, and seven. Yeah, that uh, makes nine carries for uh, Kenny tonight for a total of uh, 38 yards, just like we was talking uh, before the uh, kickoff there. Uh, Shelby Valley's not run a whole lot of plays, but they've had great field position and not had to move the ball far for their scores. Nathan Mullins in motion. We've got a flag down before the play develops. Well, number 55 for East Ridge thought he seen movement on the line, and uh, the fishers look like agree with him. Uh, Five-yard penalty to make it second down, and well, looks closer to 11 than it does 12. Well, the crowd kind of give that old mock cheer there because those five-yard penalties have been going against. Uh, uh, East Ridge out, or uh, Shelby Valley all night, and then East Ridge got one that time, so I think he's giving them that old mock cheer. A lot of discussion here in, uh, in the center of the field with uh, three of the officials. They're trying to get it all figured out. Do we want to go to Bob's Mountain Barbecue? Jerry's, where do we want to go after the ball game? <laughs> El Azul Pizza Hut. We've got a big choice if we head back toward Pike. Yeah, we have to get in. Uh, we're on Lick Creek, so there's not very many uh, places here, so we have to get back into Pikeville to get something to eat. <laughs> Those of y'all that enjoy uh, music and fun, uh, Dr. Don, Daryl Mullins, J.D. Hall all performed uh, some Johnny Cash and Elvis numbers at the retired teachers uh, meeting they just had over here in uh, in Pikeville, uh, Mr. Coleman invited them in to perform, and I think that was on TV tonight, and uh, Dr. Don says it's probably going to be on again here pretty soon, so be looking for that. I think Don said it was the first time that he, Daryl, and J.D. Hall had been together as a, as a trio just by themselves since uh, about 25 years or so. Of course, Dr. Don and Martin Sloan and uh, Jack Hopkins and all the gang gets together and uh, re reforms the stepping stones every once in a while. 
Kenny in motion. He gets the football. Missed tackle there in the backfield, but he's stopped after a short gain, but he didn't need much. He's going to be close to that first down marker. Kenny on the carry. I think he's going to come up a little short from where they're spotting the ball, so uh, it's going to be a big call here for uh, Chevy Valley's coaching staff. It's uh, fourth and uh, probably a half a yard on uh, East Ridge 40, so I'm say Dr. Don's pretty well cut out to do Johnny Cash. He's got that deep bass voice, and he can do the Johnny Cash with a little bit of a rock rock uh, side to it. Well, he, he's got that jacket on there tonight. Looks like the man in black. Man in black, yes, he is. Johnson up under center, fourth down and less than a yard, and we've got movement, and uh, did East Ridge encroach? Let's find out. I think the officials is pointing toward East Ridge, so they just uh, yes, gave, they gave them the first down, didn't gave they? Gave them the first down, and that's probably three or four that they've done that way tonight. They, uh, Shelby Valley, uh, or East Ridge, has probably given Shelby Valley more first downs on penalties than Shelby Valley's picked up. I think you're right, and... Uh, of course, Shelby Valley helped East Ridge a lot with their offside penalties, gave them a shorter field to play on in the first half, and uh, this time East Ridge decided they'd return the favor. First and 10, Shelby Valley at the East Ridge 35. Johnson has a little bit of time. Now, oh, we got a big hold right there, and it's finally called two flags down, and we've got another flag, three in the backfield. There are three we've defenders three on one wide out. So we may have offset and penalties. I don't know. Let's see. Well, we look like there's a lot of laundry on the field. I can say that. I saw a definite hold big time back there as the quarterback uh, was getting rushed, and one of the linemen just hooked the arm of the defender. But we got to see what the call in the defensive backfield was. I think it's going to be defensive pass interference. Yeah, and yep, it is. So we end up uh, just uh, coming back and starting over. Well, that time Eastridge had three defensive backs around the receiver, so there wasn't a whole lot of need for pushing down there. They thought they had him fairly well covered. Well, the uh, pass was a little short, and the receiver kind of checked up, and uh, I think the uh, defender was kind of uh, looking back and just kind of run into Running, him. Yeah, him. yeah. Give off to Kenny, and uh, linebacker held on that time. Missed the tackle, but held on to one leg. Got a little help, and Kenny gets a couple of yards. Yeah, that outside linebacker had that one smelled out pretty good, and uh, Kenny made a good move on him and just stretched the ball. The, notice the, uh, he's just a freshman, a young kid, but seems like any time that he gets, uh, has contact, he always gains positive yardage, you know. That's a sign of a good back, you know. He always is, is leaning forward and stretching that ball out. I know he must be driving and moving those legs because there's been several times where the end or the linebacker over there has had him in the backfield or had an arm on him, and he's been able to wade through the tackle and pick up a couple of yards, like you said. Yeah, it uh, looks like East Ridge is calling timeout. Uh, coach didn't look like he's too happy with what's going on with his defense. Tell us about some of those first half stats while we got a little break here, Larry. Okay, for uh, Shelby Valley, uh, had a total of uh, 96 yards uh, total offense. Uh, Johnson was three for 11 in the passing game for 37 yards. Uh, Kenny was their big uh, ball carrier. He was uh, had eight carries for 35, and uh, Mitchell had six for 14. So he just uh, had two scoring uh, or scored two touchdowns and only had 96 yards total offense. So that uh, kind of shows you that they had good field position on both of their scoring drives. For uh, East Ridge, uh, they had a total of 180 yards. Uh, Ratliff was uh, three for three for 55 in the passing game, and uh, their uh, two big ball carriers was uh, Ratliff eight for 68 and Branham five for 16. Second down and nine for Valley. Johnson back to pass, rolls out a little bit to the right-hand side, throws out there, and uh, incomplete. A little bit of bump in there, but both players look like they had a beat on the football. Yeah, they was both going for the ball, so the officials kind of, you know, let a little contact go if uh, both uh, offense and defense players are looking back for that ball. Third down and nine for Shelby Valley. East Ridge, I know, would like to get a stop here. Things have not gone 
the way they wanted them since about midway through the second quarter. They've had some penalties and mistakes and now trail by two, and they sure don't want Shelby Valley to come right out the gate here and score another touchdown on them to start the half. Man in motion is Kenny once again. Quick snap to Johnson. He fires over the middle on a crossing route to Colby Newsom incomplete. That makes 14 attempts for uh, Johnson of Shelby Valley, and he's completed four for 45 yards. So uh, they're kind of sticking to their game plan and trying to throw the ball, you know, 14 attempts. But uh, it just uh, they're just not a clicking right now. You know, I think the timing's off a little bit. You know, maybe mm -hmm. the footing on the field on the, the uh, receivers is not making that quick cut, and it's just throw their timing off a little bit. A little bit of a high snap. The punter is Brock Kenny gets off the kick. It's going to bounce and roll into the end zone for the touchback. Yeah, Johnson looks like he has a, a decent spiral and some zip on the ball, but the like you said, the timing's not right there. It's either in front or behind the receiver, and a lot of times sloppy field will kind of mess your timing up, won't it? Yeah, he, he's missed more passes, uh, seems to, like, uh, you know, leading the receiver out in front a little mm -hmm. bit, so that's kind of uh, got me thinking that, you know, the uh, – Feels a little slow and yeah. he's kind of throwed you time. Normally he's bit. quick enough to get there, but he's a half second off this time. Right. Eastridge now first and 10 at their own 20. Ratliff gets the uh, snap straight back, comes over here to the near side and picks up three yards, second and seven. Carry up at number four, David Ratliff. Looks like number seven, Anthony Newsom, uh, one of the guys on the tackle for Shelby Valley. He's just a freshman, uh, 6'2", 180, he's playing the defensive end spot right now. Yeah, that, that was a big stop for uh, East Ridge defense. Uh, the uh, first time they've had the ball here in the uh, third quarter. So uh, we'll see uh, what kind of adjustments they made on the offensive side uh, at halftime. That ball snapped into the hands of, I think, Bingham, yeah, number 15. I was looking to see if it's 15 or 16. Bingham uh, gets the ball and gets maybe a yard. Going to be third down five. Now uh, 16 Green comes in along with 12 uh, Epling as they bring in the play, and Bingham trots out. Now, big play for Eastridge here. They don't want to give the ball right back to Shelby Valley this quickly. They need to get a first down. Ball snapped back to Ratliff. He fakes the handoff. He takes it himself straight up the middle, and he should be right at the marker. Let's find out where they spot him, but he's very close. I think he's going to get it from where yep. the official looks like he's spotting it. Six yards. First down, Warrior. Needed to get right at the 30, and the ball crossed over that line by about a half a yard, so he got it. Yep. And again, it was just a play up the middle. You know, that's uh, on... on uh, you know, third and uh, uh, five, uh, and you can run straight up the middle and gain five yards. Yeah. You know, that defense or the offensive line is uh, doing some great jobs of blocking. Linebackers aren't getting in there to fill the gaps or the holes, and once again, uh, they try the middle of the line. This time it's Branham, number 22, and he picks up close to four. Second down and six, 550 left in the third quarter of play. Shelby Valley up by two on Eastridge here at Eastridge, 14 to 12. Uh, Chuck looks like Eastridge is coming out and running the same offense they did the uh, first half and uh, uh, just... Uh, now well, what do we got? Well, I don't know, Eastridge. Uh, <laughs> it looks like they trotted up to the line and then went back into the huddle and they're gonna call a procedure on Eastridge and Eric Ratliff not happy. He slammed that notebook down on the ground like, what's going on, guys? You had the play called, didn't you have it figured out? Well, I, I think, uh, I don't know if he had them to back off the line back into the huddle or, or what, but they're calling uh, illegal procedures. So mm -hmm. evidently one of the uh, linemen must have went into his uh, three-point stance yeah. and then uh, came out of it to, to back up. And uh, once you go down that three-point stance, you can't move. Bingham comes in, Green comes out with another play from Coach Ratliff. This time they've got wide outs on both sides, Epling in the slot. Ball comes to Ratliff, and he is going to be stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. No hole that time. Chris Yates, number two, head hunting, and he had a wide open shot, and Ratliff didn't get a chance to get going. 
Now he looks like he stopped him for a yard loss on that play. So, you know, again, uh, East Ridge was moving the ball. You've got the five yard penalty. Then you have a negative uh, yardage play the next play and it's uh, brought it up uh, third and 11 and put them in a hole again. Yeah, East Ridge uh, has had some success throwing the ball tonight, but most of them have been little four or five yard screen passes to the tight end or the uh, wide receiver in the slot. They've not, you know, had to throw 10, 15, 20 yards downfield yet. Ball snapped to Ratliff. He's back to pass. Got some time. Got a man all open, but overshot him. Uh, outstretched hands there of number 81, Mullins. But the ball goes incomplete, and it'll be fourth down. East Ridge is going to have to kick it away. Yeah, the tight end, uh, he lined up to the outside and run a little seam pattern. Uh, they call it just right down the hash marks, and uh, he was between uh, the two defenders. Uh, if the ball would have been put in there where he could have caught it, that would have been a successful play, but it's a little overthrown, so uh, it's forcing East Ridge to, uh, to punt on their first possession of the second half. Justin Thacker going to kick the ball, gets the ball up in the air, decent kick in these conditions, and the ball fielded by number 11, and guess who that is, Brock? Kenny, who's been the man, and he fumbles as he goes down, and let's see who has the football. A big scramble down there. I think, I think Shelby she, Valley kept it. Yeah, they, they came back up with it. Number 19 uh, looks like dived in on it and uh, kept the possession for Shelby Valley. Aaron Ratliff not very happy right now. Uh, little mistakes, uh, missed plays, uh, missed tackles. Uh, he's... That, that clipboard's yeah. getting to work Yeah, out. yeah, he's getting on the <laughs> troops here. It's like, guys, you know, we were doing so well the first part of this ball game. Let's uh, shape it up and... Well, Shelby Valley's kind of turned it up, and I think mm -hmm. he kind of feels like it's a slipping away from the East yeah. right now. Yeah, Valley's got a perfect opportunity. They've got good field position once again. Uh, this second half, they've had good field position. That goes to number three. That's Mitchell uh, on the carry, and he picks up couple of yards down toward the 42 I think is maybe where they're going to spot it let's see looks like about the 41 yeah Shelby Valley's had the uh, ball twice uh, this half uh, Chuck you was talking about their field position they took it over once on uh, East Ridge 48 and the uh, second one was the uh, East Ridge 46 so that's a short field and and uh, there's nothing good can come out of that you no. know for the defense you just put your defense in a hole to start with yeah, that's, there's so much to football and field position and that strategy of, you know, keeping your opponent on a long field is one of the big things coaches like to stress. And Shelby Valley's had a couple of real good opportunities to start this half, and we've got a penalty on Eastridge offsides. That's going to move the ball up to the 35-yard uh, line. It'll be second and two for Shelby Valley, so... Uh, East Ridge is uh, kind of falling apart uh, a little bit. Uh, they're going to have to uh, kind of step back, take their mm -hmm. breath, and, and uh, get things back in order here, or this could be a long night for them here in the second half. Kenny in motion. Give off to Jonah Justice as he goes over the guard and center area, the left side of that line, and picks up enough for the first down, gets down to the 30. Only needed a couple, and he picked up about five. First down, Shelby Valley. Yeah, it was just a, a little simple handoff up the middle, and uh, you said he went over his guard. He, he ran over a couple of East Ridge defenders, too. <laughs> yeah, he just lowered yeah. his shoulders to win on that one. They gave him a little bit of room, and he had the momentum to kind of just bull through there. He's, he's definitely their short yardage man, looks like. Kenny in motion again, give off to Kenny on the quick handoff, and uh, he cuts up and picks up about four or five over there a row, and let's see who else on the tackle there. Number 57 getting up, Larry Bennett as well. That's 11 carries for Kenny uh, in the game so far for a total of 44 yards. Uh, he's uh, by far the uh, leading rusher for Shelby Valley. Seems to have, I, I won't say breakaway speed, but but good quickness and, and nice moves, enough to at least get some defenders to, to miss him. Right. Johnson up under center, gives off this time to number two, Chris Yates, and he is thrown back at around the 31, 32 yard line. 
forward progress will mark it right out around the 30. Looks like about a three yard loss, so uh, look, the tight end stepped up field, held his ground, and uh, Yates turned it upfield, and he was there to meet him. Uh, you know, you was talking about uh, Kenny there not being uh, fast but quick. You know, there's a difference between being fast and being quick. You yeah. know, uh, you're being fast, you know, is your speed, but if you've got a quick move, uh, stop on a dime and, and uh, change directions and stuff like that. You know, you can uh, avoid a lot of tackles and uh, make a lot of guys miss and uh, pick up that two or three or four extra yards. Shelby Valley wants to talk this one over with a third down and 10 coming up. 121 left of the third quarter. They're up by two. We'll take a break here on Intermountain Sports. Back up with you. 121 left, third quarter, 14 to 12. Shelby Valley, third and 10. Big third down play for them. Johnson gives off to Kenny, finds a hole. They need to stop him, and he gets inside the 20, and he's, I think he's got the first down, Larry. Yeah, looks. He's, he's got it by a yard or two, you know, and again, they made him right at the uh, yard marker for the first down, and just like we've talked about before, uh, he gets over what the, the coaches call him yak uh, yardage, you know, yardage after contact. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they hit him right at the 20, and he was able to uh, bounce forward for another yard and a big first down for Shelby Valley. Yeah, the, the bad thing about that is uh, he had uh, eight or nine yards before he got hit. They had a nice hole open for him on that side. Yeah, they seen something on that line, and they called the play uh, during the timeout, and it worked for him. Draw play up the middle that time. Let's see who came out of there. I'm trying to get his number. I think it was Mitchell, number three. I believe that's it. Yeah, yeah. that's what it was. And a four-second six. That was a big first down for Shelby Valley. Uh, it was a, a third and long, and uh, so uh, here they've got it down now, <coughs> uh, second and uh, six on the 15-yard uh, line. I believe they handed that one off Chuck to uh, look like Kenny again. Short gain there, Cox uh, on the stop on defense as this third quarter winds down. Six seconds, five seconds. That'll be the last play of the quarter. We've come to the end of the third quarter here at Eastridge. Shelby Valley leading Eastridge by two in a good one, 14 to 12. We'll be back after this timeout on Intermountain Sports. Quarter ready to get underway. Big play for Shelby Valley. Pitch out to Kenny over on the left side looking for the first down as he heads toward the 10. Gonna be close. I believe he's gonna be about a half a yard short, but uh, bring up fourth down uh, and uh, well, no gamble here. I'd I'd definitely go right. for it. Uh, the opponent's 10 yard line, you got a half yard to go, and you've got a little bit of a lead. And even if you don't make it, they've got 90 yards to go. Right. That, that's that's the that's the thing about it. If uh, if they do stop you, you know they've got a long field and. Uh, Right now, Shelby Valley, you know, has uh, got the two-point lead and in, in, uh, playing that field position game. Johnson give off to Kenny on the near side, and he gets inside the 10 and gets enough for the first down. No flags down, so it'll be first and goal for Shelby Valley. Ball spotted down near the six. You know, Chuck, uh, if uh, Shelby Valley uh, punches this ball here in the end zone, uh, 11 minutes to go in the game, the way they've been controlling uh, the ball the second half, uh, put them up uh, eight points and didn't get that two-point conversion, you know, that makes it a two-possession game, mm -hmm. and, and that's going to put Eastridge in a Really uh, put some pressure hole. on them. I'd say nobody, I, I was going to say nobody would, uh, you know, kick the ball if they're inside their opponent's 20 and only had a half yard to go, but I forgot about Bill Curry, so <laughs> the way they used to run that offense in Kentucky, you never knew. Right, that's it. <laughs> Of course, Bill seems to be doing pretty good in the broadcast booth. <laughs> yeah, I like him. I've had a chance to talk to him, and of course, he was a fine pro player and had success coaching other places. But I think Bill Curry, you know, wanted to, you know, play Southeastern Conference Smash Mouth football and didn't have the horses to do it, you know, and that's that's where their downfall was. Well, when he won his national championship at Alabama. 
you know, uh, he came in there and I think he won it in his second or third year there. So uh, a lot of the players wasn't players that he recruited. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, you well, know, they're we saying that now about Larry Coker down at Miami. Right. You know, he had Butch Davis's kids and now won the big own. games with them. Yeah. yeah. Of course, you know, uh, <laughs> when it comes on to, to the uh, recruiting uh, trail and uh, you uh, tell a kid that you're a coach at Kentucky or Alabama, it's not too uh, hard for the co or the uh, kid to make a decision on which school he'd want to go to, too, you know, so. Johnson give off to Jonah Justice, and Justice fighting hard for that goal line. He got hit at the line of scrimmage, kept going forward. We got a flag down right in that line area. Right in that holding area. It looks mm -hmm. like it could be a hold on Shelby Valley. Johnson, a lot of that on personal effort alone though he got hit right at the line of scrimmage and picked up three or four tough yards on his own but it's going to be for not as the penalty going to mark it off against Shelby Valley 1042 left in the ball game Valley now out at the 15 yard line after that penalty yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sure the coaches, uh, well, uh, the, you know, none of them wants to see a penalty on the drive and everything, but if you're going to get one, you know, on first down would be the time to get it because you still got four downs to make that up. So uh, backed herself up, but uh, maybe not hurting herself as bad as it would if it had been uh, deeper in the uh, in the count. Johnson in the shotgun give off to Jonah Justice. Finds a hole and loses the football as he goes through the line, and I think East Ridge has picked it up. Big turnover right there for East Ridge. Uh, look like uh, number 84, I think, come out of that pile with it. At least he's got it in his hands as he trots off the field. Yeah, that's a big turnover for East Ridge because uh, Shelby Valley had pushed him down the field and was getting ready to take that in the end zone. They hit him on about the two-yard line, and uh, and he coughed it up. Uh, so uh, East Ridge is still alive. You know, they've got the ball. The 10, it's a long ways to go to a score, but if they can drive this down and put this in the end zone, uh, they'll uh, take the Jacob momentum Ratliff and the lead the away, from recovery. away from Shelby Valley. David Ratliff on the carry, looking for some breathing room, and he finds it and gets all the way outside to the 25 before he's tripped up. Could have had an, e could have had an even bigger gainer. Yeah, that uh, looked like he gained 15 yards and uh, brought it away from that goal line. They're up on the 25-yard uh, line now, so that's, that's a big run. Gave them a little room out there, a little space to operate offensively now at their own 25. Plenty of time left, just a two-point ball game. Eastridge just needs to take care of the football and uh, cut down on the mistakes. They were moving it real well in the first part of the game. This time, Ratliff once again on the snap and the keeper, and he is stopped cold. I believe they're going to give him a gain of maybe a half a yard. Uh, that's uh, 12 carries for Ratliff in the game and 86 yards, so he's been their uh, big yardage man, Chuck. Yeah, the other game we did, I think, a couple weeks back at South Floyd, he had, I think, 130-something yards and a couple of touchdowns. And, and we've got a flag down as the play starts up, and we may have uh, got some illegal procedure. Yes, we do against Eastridge. Yeah, it looked like that guard pulled out of there a little early. He was... Uh, play called for him to uh, pull around the uh, left side, maybe be a lead blocker, and he's just trying to get a little bit of a head start. Second and 14. Again, that's a penalty, you know, for uh, East Ridge on a uh, critical drive uh, here uh, with nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Uh, kindly backs them up, and, and uh, they just keep shooting herself in the foot, Chuck. Second and long now, second and 14, and time will become a factor here if Eastridge unable to get this first down. They pitch back to Epling. Epling slung down there on a good defensive play over on that side. I think Kenny, one of the folks over there, also number seven, Taylor Newsom. Little just, or no gain on that play. Just reached out, grabbed him by the uniform, was able to hang on and just twist him around and sling him to the ground for a one yard gain. 
Third down and, uh, well, we'll call it 13. They'll give him one on the play. Bingham in and Green out, bringing the play in for Eastridge. Big third down play. They need to convert this third down because if uh, they give the ball back to Valley, number one, Valley will have pretty decent field position, and number two, they'll have a chance to work on that clock with the lead. Ratliff back to pass, had a man open and overshot the outstretched hands of row number 80 there. A row was open. Yeah, he was open, uh, and uh, Ratliff threw the ball kindly behind him instead of, uh, he didn't lead him enough, and he's trying to reach back behind him, so it's incomplete, and it's going to force uh, East Ridge uh, into a, a punting uh, situation. Justin Thacker, number three, Got the ball up pretty high in the air. Not a booming kick last time. Back here at midfield, a return is Kenny. Another decent kick, end over end, fielded by Kenny at the 45. And he's belted down right there. A nice open field tackle, number 55, Austin Cox, the man that nailed him. Yeah, he had, uh, showed good hustle getting down the field and uh, got in a good tackling position as Kenny made his uh, move. He just uh, stuck him right in his tracks. And uh, again, uh, Shelby Valley's going to take over the ball on their own 46. Uh, great field position, uh, two point lead was just under eight minutes to go. So they could take a lot of time off this clock, Chuck, on this drive. Definite series of downs where East Ridge needs a stop. They don't need any more points scored against them if they have hopes of coming back and winning this one at home. Kenny on the carry picks up a couple or three tough yards as he gets out to about the 49. And he spotted closer to the midfield stripe. Yeah, a gain of four, so uh, that's a good positive uh, gain on first down for uh, Chevy Valley, so East Ridge is going to have to uh, stiffen up here on their defense and uh, and uh, make Shelby Valley give the ball up or uh, Shelby Valley is going to put it in the end zone and if they do, this game pretty well be over with another score. Johnson up under center gives off this time to Mitchell, the fullback, and there's no one there. Big hole. He gets the first down and more inside the 40 down to about the 36 of East Ridge. Looked like everybody was going the other way, Larry, and uh, Mitchell's like, hey, man, I'm sitting out here all by myself. Well, they've been giving the ball to uh, uh, Kenny, and uh, he's been uh, taking it to the edge, you know, to the outside, mm -hmm. and, and uh, been faking that handoff, and that and uh, the East Ridge had kind of been keying on Kenny, and that time they gave him the ball, and he went straight up the middle, and uh, a big 14-yard gain, so... Uh, Chevy Valley uh, seems like they're uh, gaining some momentum here on this drive, and uh, they're looking good right now. They're mixing it up a little bit. Jonah Justice has had a couple of nice carries for him in this half. Right now, Kenny and Mitchell in the back backfield, along with Johnson. Give off to Kenny, and Kenny stacked up after a gain of a yard, maybe two to the 35. 6.33 and counting left in the ball game. Shelby Valley 14, East Ridge 12. Dr. Don Chuck Scoville and Larry Cecil here with you from East Ridge. And after a horrible day, it didn't turn out to be too bad an evening. No, this is a beautiful football evening. It's a little, a little bit cool, but uh, you know, the players is enjoying this weather, you know, because they're out there uh, hustling and uh, giving it all. So uh, it's a, a great evening for high school football. Man in motion is Kenny. Give off this time to number two, Chris Yates going the other way. Yates gets down near the first down marker inside the 30 down to around the 26. Should be enough. It looks like from my vantage point, they may have to measure. No first down. Thought they were gonna bring the chains out, but he looked over and said first down. Yeah, the. Uh Looked like uh, probably about a half lift of the football, and uh, Shelby Valley is uh, picking those critical first downs up and taking time off the clock and moving uh, closer to that goal line, Chuck. Eastridge needs a big stop or a big defensive play. They need the football back. Johnson give off to Mitchell, the fullback straight up the middle, picks up a couple inside the 25. Yeah, I guess this cool rainy weather today is kind of getting us prepared for what we know is coming later in football season. I tell you, you've done all that refereeing all these years, and 
There have been some snowy, icy, miserable nights, especially when you get down late in the season toward the playoffs. Yeah, it gets pretty uh, tough out there sometimes. I don't see how the players stand it. You can't hardly stand it yourself, and it uh, looks like we've got another flag coming out on the field. Offside against Eastridge, so Eastridge now uh, been penalized several times for being offsides after Shelby Valley had that problem early in the ball game. Yeah, both teams has had a problem. Seem like uh, offsides and false starts. Most of the penalties, uh, the, the bigger majority has been a five-yard penalty, you know, resulting from something that's happened in the line. Johnson. Power backfield, three backs in there, gives off to Jonah Justice, number 20. He cuts inside, breaks two tackles, still on his feet inside the 10, down near the five. I think they're gonna mark him at the six. Yeah, that was a very determined run. He ran over two or three of East Ridge players, and uh, I thought he was going to break it for the score, and the uh, guy kindly got him down into the uh, ankles and uh, lower body and tripped him up, but uh, it's going to be first down and goal from the seven-yard line from Shelby Valley. Justice just must have some good leg power because he has busted through several would-be tackles here in this second half and picked up some good yardage for him when they needed it. This time, Johnson, I think, gives off to, was that Mitchell? Let I me think see. that was Mitchell. Yeah, Mitchell, and he loses a yard or two. Chuck, I noticed uh, when uh, Shelby Valley's quarterback comes up to the line, he's uh, watching the sideline. Uh, they're milking everything they can off the clock. They got a man over there. If you see him now, uh, he's holding his uh, hat up, and uh, they'll watch that play clock. And right before it's time uh, for uh, the uh, delay of penalty uh, to come out, uh, he's dropping his arm, and they're snapping the ball. So they're uh, milking that every second they can off of that clock. Yeah, that's, a, that's smart coaching, uh, smart playing by Shelby Valley because even if they don't store, score, Eastridge is going to be way deep in their own territory and they're not going to have a whole lot of time to march the field. That's exactly right. Johnson under center and before the play starts, another flag. Looked like he was going to pitch over to Kenny, but uh, didn't get a chance to. Eastridge once again offsides and they just keep right on at it, Larry. Uh, yeah, that, that's, themselves uh, in the foot. that's two or three times this one drive. Uh, this will be a uh, half the distance penalty, but uh, when you're trying to uh, keep a team out of the end zone and uh, uh, you keep giving them those yards, you know, you're, you're just killing yourself, you know. You just uh, don't, don't understand why that's, that's probably at least 10 penalties this tonight for mm -hmm. offside or something. So. I tell you, whoever loses this one, whether it be Shelby Valley or Eastridge, they're not going to be happy because both of them have had the opportunities presented to them to, to win, and there's just been a lot of little errors on both sides. Yes, they have. Give off to Jonah Justice, and he's going to barrel his way into the end zone. Once he gets going, they don't seem to be able to stop him. He just runs right on through them. Well, now, when, when he hits that hole and gets squared up and uh, gets him shoulders squared down the field, he is going to run over somebody. He's only 190 pounds listed on the program, but he hits like about a 240-pound power fullback, doesn't he? He sure does, and uh, and he always gets positive yardage after that first contact, and most of the time he's breaking tackles to get those uh, that extra yardage. 20 to 12 the score. Shelby Valley trying the point after via the kick this time, and the kick is no good. The attempt made there by Cody Varney, and with 3.05 left in this ball game, Shelby Valley has extended their lead by a score of 20 to 12 over Eastridge. We'll be back with the Wildcat kickoff after this break on Intermountain Sports. Welcome back. Shelby Valley now ready to kick off. 3.05 left in this ball game. Thacker in the middle, uh, number three, as Shelby Valley kicks straight down the middle, number 81. I think it's Corey Mullins on the short kickoff uh, return, and he's got some nice running room, gets all the way out to midfield, so uh, Eastridge at least presented with an opportunity to uh, work on a shorter field with 2.58 left, and they're not out of it, Larry. A touchdown and a two-point conversion could tie it up. 
Yeah, they've uh, they've attempted five passes uh, in the game so far, completed three. So uh, you know they can complete some passes, but uh, they've got plenty of time. You know, 2:58 to go, and uh, they're under 48, so uh, 52 yards to, away from the end zone. They've had some uh, good uh, runs tonight, so uh, they'll probably stick to their offense and what they've been doing, and uh, see what they can do with. And we've got a jump on the line. I think Valley going to be called for encroachment. Well, I, I guess uh, they figured that East Ridge kind of helped them out, so they're going to try to help East Ridge out. <laughs> kind of surprised me that Shelby Valley, can, given the you know the field conditions tonight, tried that extra point via the the kick. Uh, they'd been running the ball so well, I figured they'd give it to Kenny or, or Justice and try to drive that nail in the coffin, get that two point conversion where East Ridge would have to you know have two possessions to to beat them. Right. Well, they're, they're up eight, so, you know, the extra point would have put a, made it a two-possession game. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but you know, from the, I don't know uh, if they just had a bad exchange or not from the uh, snap, but the, the kick wasn't even close. No, no, it was kind of like uh, the kick Eastridge tried. Didn't get, didn't get very high off the ground. Second down and four for the Warriors as they operate from the... 46 of Shelby Valley. That is Bingham, and Bingham stacked up right at the line. He didn't go anywhere. Now, uh, looks like he might have even uh, lost a uh, yard on the play, so we've got a timeout on the field. Uh, East Ridge, uh, <coughs> third, third down and uh, five with uh, 2.16 to go on the clock, so uh, Coach Ratliff is uh, coming down. He's got two plays left here unless they get a first down in this game. So he, he's bringing them to the sideline and uh, drawing up a play maybe to be able to pick up that first down, Chuck. Yeah, that's something they really need. And, well, they've had, you know, a couple of times they've had guys open and overshot them on the pass and things like that. And he wants to make sure that they, they execute this third down play. And, Keep the drive alive because they're not going to get a chance, I don't think, to touch the football again if they don't keep the drive alive. You know, uh, one of their better plays is uh, kind of uh, that hesitation move, uh, the line going down in, drawing Shelby Valley off uh, mm -hmm. offside. So uh, I'm sure Shelby Valley's coach has uh, made his team aware that, you know, they could try that again. So uh, yeah, that, they've got less than five to yards watch. to go, so they'll probably try that. Yeah. I don't know whether he's staggering his cadence or, you know, doing a strong count, like you said, or what, but uh, it's been pretty effective so far. He's drawn a lot of offsides. Cody Epling gets the snap and falls forward after being hit, and I think he's got enough for the first down. Yeah, he, they're, they're marking him uh, for a first down and uh, keep the drive alive. Uh, two minutes and 11 seconds to go, so... Uh, East Ridge uh, has still got an opportunity to uh, score and uh, tie this game up. Bingham in, uh, Green comes trotting out with a play for East Ridge. Rowe on the far side, uh, Mullins on the near side, and Epling in the slot position as a receiver. Ratliff looks to pass. And uh, had a chance to throw, but he keeps it, and he's got some running room, looking for some blocks, and gets one, and gets inside the 30 to the 28. That is another first down for Eastridge. Yeah, he was, he was looking for his uh, man in the slot receiver position there, and they had him covered pretty good. Uh, the uh, the rush kind of went to each side of him, opened up that middle, mm -hmm. and he just uh, pulled it down and uh, made a big 15-yard run for a first down. Mullins there clapping his hands, saying, hey, I want the football, but Ratliff says, no, I think I can get more on the keeper, and there he goes up the middle again, gets a nice block, nice hole inside the 20 to about the 18. So Eastridge now looking like they did very early in the ball game, at least the last couple of plays, picking up some nice chunks of yardage when they need it. Well, Ratliff has been their uh, workhorse tonight. That's 14 carries for him uh, for uh, 110 yards. So uh, it's coming down to the games on the line, and uh, I guess he's just decided he's going to take the game in his hand and see what he can do with it. Yeah, he's a good kid, too. I, you know, I haven't had a chance to interact with him a lot the last couple of years, but uh, growing up, you know, he was always humble, always a hard worker, loved football, loved to hit people, and 
How he ended up at quarterback, I don't know. I thought he was pretty good linebacker. He was always out there head hunting when he played that position. But good all around athlete. Well, now he's uh, he's playing the quarterback position pretty good right now mm -hmm. for uh, for East Ridge. Uh, he's uh, had uh, 14 carries for 110 yards, and he's uh, three for five in the passing game for 55 yards. So he's uh, contributed a total of 165 total yards for uh, East Ridge tonight. So he's he's been their workhorse. A little bit different on offense tonight than they were against South Florida a couple of weeks ago uh, when they were looking to pass a couple of weeks ago. Green was the one throwing the football tonight Ratliff's been the one and a little bit of everything he slipped on that back foot trying to get some uh, arc on the ball and I think he may have had it intercepted in the end zone I saw that back foot slide when he stopped to throw that pass and uh, didn't get on it what he wanted looking for Epling down in the end zone the ball uh, kind of went away from him a little bit and got picked off yeah, his, uh, he lost his footing a little bit on his plant foot, and the ball floated on him, and uh, Shelby Valley had two men uh, there. Uh, hit just like a punt, you know, mm -hmm. coming down to him. Applin got in there and done everything he could to break that up. I thought he had, uh, had uh, knocked it out, but the uh, official was right there and uh, said that Shelby Valley uh, had possession, so... Uh, That's just one of those unfortunate plays there where... He slipped and didn't get the zip uh, that he wanted on the football. And Shelby Valley now, all they're going to have to do is just run the ball two or three times and run this clock out. Heartbreaking loss here at home if it holds up for uh, Eastridge as Shelby Valley up by eight. Eastridge has got a couple of timeouts, I think, left, and they just called one to stop the clock with 111 remaining in the football game. Of course, we be sure to join uh, Larry Cecil and our good buddy Charlie Pinson tomorrow night uh, or tomorrow from Pikeville as they play Campbellsville and I don't know what kind of ball club Campbellville Campbellsville's got this year but they're normally a pretty pretty competitive uh, football squad. Yeah I've not seen no stats on them or anything but you know both teams have come in fired up ready to play that game because it's the first conference mm -hmm. game of the season for Pikeville. I'm not sure about Campbellsville but um, I'm sure the Bears want to get started in their conference schedule uh, on a successful note. Uh, and they got a pretty good quality little league with, uh, you know, Georgetown, Campbellsville, Pikeville, Union, uh, yeah, the University uh, of the Cumberlands. There's some some pretty good, uh, some pretty decent football teams yeah, in that group. That's one of the tougher conferences in that NAIA division. Mm -hmm. Johnson given off to, I think that was Kenny, and he didn't get any running room at all as he gets stacked up. But uh, Shelby Valley not necessarily needing the yardage. They're just trying to run the ball and work that clock. 56 that seconds number, and counting. I think that was number 20 justice that had that carriage up. All righty. Yeah, the only thing they want to do is just snap it, and evidently East Ridge is out of timeouts because uh, they didn't stop the clock, and it's... Uh, they may have to go one more play, and this one will be over. That's yeah, the they, shortest they run I think Justice has had tonight. He's, he's been barreling through that line this second half. Yeah, the main thing right now is for him just to just hang on to the ball. <clears throat> Well, Shelby right. Valley going to call a timeout. That's a shocker with 27 seconds left. They've got two downs left, Larry. Yeah, the, I don't know, uh, don't understand why they called that because most likely the quarterback's just going to snap it and uh, take a knee and mm -hmm. uh, and then time the uh, the ball's reset for play. You know, that would be the last play of the game. So uh, i got to ask your opinion on one thing. I was reading in the paper today, uh, well, yesterday's USA Today Sports, uh, I guess Connecticut and a couple of other states, I think I was reading, have come up with a 50-point a rule that um, a high school coach, if they run up the score and uh, win by more than 50 and the athletic uh, state athletic officials feel like they could have prevented uh, a, a more than 50-point blowout, the uh, winning coach gets suspended for the next ball game. I hadn't, and, hadn't uh, seen that, but uh, I'm like, well, that's kind of interesting. That was like one of them old Steve Spurrier rules, you know. He used to run it up on everybody when he was at Florida. Right, right. Well, uh, I know one of the coaches up there I was reading appealed because they were up 40, 
nine to nothing at halftime, and they had third stringers in in the third and fourth quarter and somehow scored again, and they were going to suspend the coach, and uh, they overruled it, said, well, you know, if they had third stringers in, that's as deep as they could go. You know, they, they weren't trying to run the score up anymore. Yeah. And that last play runs the clock out for Shelby Valley, and they come down here visiting East Ridge. They fall behind 12 to nothing in the first half. They come back, uh, get the two-point lead, and then here in the fourth quarter, they tack on another touchdown, and they beat East Ridge in a hard-fought ball game by a score of 20 to 12, a game that either team could have won. Uh, yeah, uh, in the, the first quarter and, uh, and actually the first half, East Ridge kindly dominated as far as yardage mm -hmm. gained. Uh, they had the uh, fumble in the first half uh, that uh, Shelby Valley recovered on the 20-yard line and scored just before the, the uh, halftime uh, clock ran out. And then they was driving the ball here uh, down eight uh, late in the game and uh, come up with an unfortunate uh, interception when the quarterback lost his footing when he was throwing the ball. So the two big turnovers really is what uh, done the uh, – the East Ridge Warriors in tonight, and uh, but you got to hand it to Shelby Valley. You know when they got those turnovers, they took advantage of it. Yeah, they done sure did. With them. You know both teams uh, had penalties and made some mistakes, but uh, seemed like Shelby Valley was able to capitalize just a little bit more on the errors that East Ridge made, and they made that that uh, tight ball game and that score hold up. Yes, uh, the Chevy Valley, uh, their self, you know, they gave the ball up. Uh, they was uh, driving uh, toward the end zone and I think fumbled on the five or six that East Ridge uh, recovered. So uh, playoff or uh Mistakes played a, a big part in this game. Uh, East Ridge uh, couldn't take advantage of the uh, one turnover from Shelby Valley, and Shelby Valley took advantage of the turnovers they got. The penalties kind of uh, even herself out. There was plenty of them, so uh, uh, big win for uh, Shelby Valley. That puts them 2-0 and in the uh, district, and... Uh, if Belfry, uh, well, let's see, uh, Belfry and Powell, that's not a district game, but uh, that, that'll put them tied for Belfry for the lead in the district. Yeah, this was a big win for Shelby Valley. They go to four and one on the year, so uh, they're looking good. Uh, Sheldon Clark, Belfry, a couple of really good teams in that double A district, but uh, Shelby Valley, uh, you know, with a win over either one of them could uh, go as high as uh, number two in the district. And uh, heck, who knows? Anything can happen in high school football. I don't think that Belfry's going to be dethroned very easily, but uh, Shelby Valley got to be feeling good about their playoff hopes right now. Yeah, uh, you know, when you get those district wins and uh, you, they just keep adding up and uh, that adds momentum and excitement to the program. Uh, the kids work, uh, you know, maybe a little harder, you know, not saying that they don't work hard anyway, but, you know, it, it gives them something to look forward to. Their goal every year is to win the uh, district tournaments, I mean the district uh, title. So, uh, And there's some tough teams know. across the mountain and down the road in AA, so I know Shelby Valley would love to get up into, a, you know, one of those top two s slots where they can have the playoff game at home, at least for the first week. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's really important, you know, getting that uh, – uh, number one or two spots so you'll be at home in the playoffs uh, always helps you know to, to, to be at home and not make that uh, long road trip so uh, uh, they're, they're looking good right now I think that makes them five, uh, four and one on the season or is that four and one or five yeah. and one four and four one and on one, the season yeah. so uh, they've got a good season going and a lot to look forward to for, uh, uh, two for the rest of the season and on the other hand East Ridge you know just uh, maybe uh, take care of a few mistakes and uh, you know they can get right back into thick things Yeah too. they did some things well tonight and they've got some talent and we want to thank Rodney Rowe who's up here filming for Shelby Valley he uh, brought us some stats from downstairs they've got somebody uh, Johnny on the spot with a computer down there just just, just like college games don't they and uh, we got a nice uh, set of stats uh, from Rodney real quick after the ball game so I'll let you run over some of them Larry. Yeah I appreciate uh, the uh, stat man, this makes it a lot easier on us. Uh, uh, we'll go with uh, the uh, East, Red War uh, East Ridge Warriors to start with in the rushing department. Uh, Ratliff had 14 attempts for 84 yards. Uh, Eplin, uh, six attempts for uh, 23 yards. Branham carried the ball four times for 19. Bingham four times for 12. And Miller two times for 13 for a total of 151 yards on the ground. Uh, 
In the passing department, uh, Ratliff was uh, three for six for one touchdown and one interception, Chuck, and that interception, you know, uh, there at the end, uh, ended the drive that uh, more or less ended their hopes for this game. On the other side uh, for the uh, Shelby Valley Wildcats uh, in the uh, department, uh, Kenny uh, was the workhorse there. He had 20 attempts uh, for 65 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Mitchell was uh, eight carries for 32 yards. Uh, Justice had seven carries for 41 yards and a touchdown. And uh, Yates carried the ball four times for uh, 11 yards. In the passing department, Johnson had 14 attempts with four completions and uh, and one TD. So. Uh, uh, Again, the final score for uh, the Shelby Valley uh, Wildcats 20 and uh, East Red Warriors 12. And um, big win for them in the district, uh, just like we talked about before, 4-1 uh, on the season. And uh, and uh, just uh, I'm sure that they had, uh, I don't know where they're at next week, but, uh, you know, that just gives them a lot of momentum for the rest of the season. It sure does, and always a pleasure to work with you. Uh, we're getting uh, getting the hang of things being together here and coming up with a pretty good team, I think. Uh, uh, Shelby Valley playing Grundy next week, and that's always a big game for them. Grundy normally a high-flying, high-scoring uh, football team that's given Shelby Valley fits over the years, so that should be a good one. Yeah, I've, I've officiated some of Grundy's game. I think a couple years ago they had a uh, some kind of like of a bowl game, the uh, Tico Cole Bowl. I think it was called, and uh, Grundy came over and played, and uh, had a, had a well-disciplined uh, team. At, and uh, don't remember if they was victorious that uh, night or not, but uh, you know they will come uh, ready to play. All right. Well, that'll about do us from here. Final score once again: Shelby Valley 20, Eastridge 12. For Dr. Don on the camera, for Larry Cecil on color and stats. I'm Chuck Scoville saying, see you next Friday for Football Friday Night here on Intermountain Sports.